Almost over, almost done, guys, please. So it's a great pleasure introducing Taha. He's a research fellow of the Oxford Internet Institute and also the Alan Turing Institute. And uh, the title, I think, said everything, so please. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Thomas here from the Adam Turing Institute for Data Science and the Oxford Instruments Institute. Actually, I'm very thankful for you guys for inviting me today. It's a very special day for me as well. Uh, four years ago today, I met my, I met my girlfriend. Uh, we broke up about two years ago. So <laughs> uh, raise your hand if you are single too. And raise your hand if you are single and you're using one of those dating apps. <laughs> raise your hand if you are not single but you are using dating apps. <laughs> well done, guys. And these dating apps is less than your dates and uh, it makes up matches about 26 million pairs per day. It has led to great uh, innovations like this one here, which is called Tender. I suppose it's similar to my own guy. So, we wanted to study Tinder or generally dating apps. For those of you who pretend that uh, you don't know how it works, uh, <laughs> this is how it works. You see profiles and very basic information of people of the gender that you're interested in. Uh, if you like it, you swipe right, and if the other person does the same, you get matched, and after that you could talk to each other. In this case, Alison says, hey John, can't believe we have 24 friends in common, but we have never met. And, Alice, uh, and, and uh, John says, hi Alison, I know, that's crazy. How do you know Jessica? Well, in this case, uh, Alison was not quite lucky because John is a total, total douchebag, but uh, <laughs> generally this is how it works. And what we're interested in is what happens after the match, uh, when people start talking to each other. Uh, so this is the patterns in communication, dynamic communications between, between people. Uh, this idea came from Jenny. Jenny used to be my uh, master's student in Oxford. No, she's a uh, she's working for Uber, not as a driver. <laughs> uh, she has drink. I mean, she wanted to be a driver, but she has drinking problems. As well. <laughs> so they said you better be a data scientist. At Uber, and this is what she does today. So she came to my office and said, you know, there is this cool thing, uh, a dating uh, apps. Let's so study. I said that's fine. Let's collect data. Uh, we went around and dated people eventually, and that was exhausting, really. <laughs> uh, so we said we have to go to companies and ask for data, so we cannot collect data this way. <laughs> we communicated with Tinder, they very politely showed us the middle finger and responded to our request. So we, we found another company, which I am not allowed to name, I could use our MDA. But they gave us a data on 400,000 unique heterosexual users uh, over a very long period of time. They did not give us the content of communications, of course, but what they gave us was the metadata of all the communications between all these pairs. Uh, we had some, uh, some, some, some uh, 2 million conversations uh, with about 20 million messages, so really huge metadata. What we knew about conversations were basically the gender of people, the length of the message, the number of words, the number of letters, if there is a question mark in it, if there is a phone number. So that, that was all we had about the communications. Uh, then we started to ask very simple questions. The first thing is reciprocity. If, if you are on one of those apps, well, what I use here is from Tinder, but as I said, this data doesn't come from Tinder. If you are on this app, you know that reciprocation is not that likely. I mean, here someone on, on 27th of May said, uh, you're actually perfect, that's the first message. Very nice pickup line, I suppose. Uh, one day later, he or she said, I'd like to be honest with the way you ignored me, it's perfect. <laughs> but I have another example here, someone on my own said, hi, January 5th, January 6th, January 5th. Thursdays of January. Hey, uh, about two weeks later, hi. Finally, uh, the other person said. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And then the first person says, hi. <laughs> Total loser, just like me. Uh, so, the is not quite high. Uh, about 35% of 
all conversations only have one message, probably five or eleven. And about 51% of conversations are never reciprocated. So it's not only you, all of us are losers. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the timing, uh, this shows the timing of the first message uh, relative to the time that people got matched. You see there are two types of people. Uh, people who immediately after Max send a message, and people who wait a bit longer. The peak here is about a day. This is logarithm of time in minutes. So this is about 1,000 minutes a day. Uh, so we have seen these two, two types of behavior. The response time shows similar picture, but it's like a difference. People usually take more time to respond. So that peak here vanishes. But then the other peak about, again, one or two days exists. But as you can see, the distribution is a bit shifted to the left. This is surprising because if you think about texting, people text quite quickly, very frequently. Here, the average frequency is one or two messages per day or per two days. People take their time. Uh, well, who initiates the conversation? 83% uh, 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 of cases are male. Uh, this is very interesting because Tinder is such a modern environment, but we see that very old cultural stereotypes exist there as well. Very interestingly, in those cases that female initiates the conversation, the chance of reciprocation goes down. So it's better, if you're a girl, it's better to wait. Eventually you might get an initiation, but if you initiate the conversation, it might not go that low. Well. Uh, and that's not surprising. This is actually a piece of research done by people from Queen's Mary. Uh, they survey people. Men usually uh, swipe right very often and they get matched quite rarely. <coughs> Females do not swipe right that often, but whenever they do, actually they get a match. So it's a bit like number games for guys. They swipe right all the time and see what happens. And if they are not interested after getting matched, they don't respond to the message. But as for girls, if they swipe right, they actually mean it and they are more likely to respond to a message. Uh, we looked into other things, uh, for example, the ratio of words, uh, guys versus gay, uh, girls, and the conclusion is that men talk more on these apps, irrespective of your measure. The total number of messages, the length of the message, the number of words, and that's interesting because that's not what we think when, uh, and what we observe when, for example, we study text messages. Uh, of course, we are more interested in success, and it's difficult to uh, measure success, what we did was to look after phone numbers uh, because we knew if there was a phone number exchange and we considered it as a success indicator. Uh, about 90% of convers mutual conversations lead to a phone number exchange. Uh, we looked at the message sequence number where the phone number was exchanged uh, and you see that typically the phone number is exchanged between 10th and 20th message. So if you have been texting for like 100 messages and you haven't got the phone number, <laughs> probably, probably better give up. It's not going to happen. Uh, and then we looked into some features, whether we could predict the, the exchange of phone number and there are some factors that are important. The ratio of messages sent by female over messages sent by male uh, is a very strong indicator of success. Uh, and then the number of question marks and the number of explanation marks sent by women are better predictor. Uh, if the initiator, message, initiator person messages more, it probably is not going to lead to a successful conversation. So if you start, probably you should shut up at some point and let the other person, in this case mostly the woman, talk. <laughs> we also had the social separation of the person how far they are from each other on Facebook, according to the Facebook friendship. And we analyze the success rates based on the distance, the social distance. Very interestingly, we saw the further the people are, the less likely that they reciprocate the conversation, they respond to the first message. But as soon as they got to the conversation, they responded, then the phone number exchange rate is independent of the social distance. And that's very interesting because apparently you build some sort of trust if you start talking to someone. But before that, the closer you are on the social network, the more likely you actually start talking to each other. Uh, people did not know on this network what's their distance. So that's a kind of independent variable. 
Uh, I see hands going up and down. Probably that means I have to summarize. This is a great audience. Very good gender balance. I usually talk to loser guys. Uh, so, uh, uh, I work at the university. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, method, the, the conclusion is a bit male oriented. I'm sorry for that. First of all, dudes, uh, initiate the conversation. It's your job, even though it's 27, 17. Uh, take your time, don't rush, and be patient because it might take one or two days to get a response. Uh, uh, ask for the number rather early. Not early in time, but early in terms of number of messages. Don't wait for 100 or 200 messages. Uh, let the woman talk, uh, ask questions, and impress to get uh, exclamation marks. Only one person of sexual conversations did not have any question marks in them. And finally, go for the friends of your friends because you are closer in the social network. But check that. For, I mean, not friends of your girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. I learned it. Okay. Uh, there is a paper out there if you want to check. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.